The price of Ethereum rose up last night to approximately $1,420, and this afternoon it had a fairly volatile afternoon, being that the CPI data came out today. And the CPI data, well, that was good news. U.S. inflation falls to the lowest in more than a year. U.S. inflation is currently sat at 6.5%, exactly where we expected it to be, hence why the market has neither had a positive or negative reaction to this. If we actually take a look, a brief look at the CPI data and look at how that's been getting along this is what we have right now and the key thing within this is if we look at gasoline all types or fuel oil actually go over to fuel oil right here on the final column you'll see that basically six minus 16.6 percent and gasoline down uh, minus nine percent basically we've seen throughout the month of december uh, massive reductions in the prices of various different fuels which is overall brought inflation down due to the large part of people's lifestyle that fuel takes up essentially that is a net positive thing it's good to be seeing this and if you're wondering where i'm seeing it this is the domain right here if you want to study it in more detail just pause the screen right now type in this domain and it'll take you exactly to where you need to be to view that cpi data now in terms of my current open trades how am i trading this well i've currently got my ethereum long position open right here but you will know if you follow me on twitter uh, last night i actually bought yeah, last night it was. Last night I posted these tweets basically showing you, look, I'm taking profits right now. So we took 16,900 profit on Bitcoin, 1,600 profit on Polkadot, 4,000 profit on Matic, and 9.89 uh, Ethereum profit overall, leaving us essentially with about $47,000 in the account. Now we started this account just a couple of weeks ago now with $7,000. So we flipped seven grand into 47 grand in the span of a very short period of time, which is fantastic news. But where do we go from here? What is the next trade to place and if you're interested in that slap a like on today's video make sure you are subscribed to the channel we're trying to hit on the channel 100,000 subscribers this year so if you are new to the channel please do drop a like on it and please do subscribe again we're trying to hit 500 likes on this video i know that we can do it so do smash that like button now back to bitcoin of course what is going to happen to the price of bitcoin from here what are we exactly looking at well i actually want to start out with the price of Ethereum right now. This is Ethereum and this is Ethereum on the one hour chart. And since the news about the CPI data broke, essentially we came down, we actually broke the bottom of the VWAP, which in theory means that the price should go straight back up because you can see every single time we break the bottom of the VWAP, price goes up, breaks the VWAP, price goes up, breaks the bottom of the VWAP somewhere down here. Again, breaks it there, price goes up. We see this time and time again with the VWAP. It's a very reliable indicator. However, we use it in combination with the standard, not standard deviation, sorry, the volume profile. Uh, it's the VWAP standard deviation bands is this. Uh, that's what I was getting wrong there. Now, anyway, we're looking at the volume profile right now. We can see basically we have an actual really big liquidity gap. Uh, this liquidity gap is sitting in this range right here, meaning that essentially the price of Ethereum could go down to the control line right here at approximately $1,339. For me, that's really what I'd be looking at in terms of going for a long entry. I'm I'm optimistic about the markets right now, and I really do think we'll probably have a positive weekend and a positive end of the week. Uh, but Monday next week in America is a bank holiday, so we could end up with some price stagnation throughout the weekend and into Monday. And then when the markets reopen Tuesday, everything goes batty again and everything takes off or, or dumps. You never know. Uh, but we can analyze that at the time when we are looking at the charts then. So looking at this, however, what are we expecting from here? Well, I'd be more so inclined, being that we've not actually flashed a green VWAP here because we actually closed this candle to the upside of the VWAP here. I don't really feel mega bullish uh, on this right now. And I actually feel like we could potentially come back down and revisit the control line right here at approximately $1,331. I've got kind of really no interest in taking a short position right now, being that I just made 40 grand. It doesn't really seem to make sense uh, kind of making that trade, but that would be the trade that I was taking if I did want to take a trade right now. I'm not going to take the short trade. Instead, I'm going to actually leave my Ethereum position open, but that's just because my Ethereum position, you've got to remember, is open since $1,200. Like it owes me nothing does that trade. And being that we've made such significant profits on the Bybit account, it just doesn't make sense to, to keep opening another one. So other things that we're looking at. So I'm not going to be shorting Ethereum but I'm also looking at the price of Bitcoin right now, of course. And I am looking to take a Bitcoin trade fairly soon because I feel like the reliability of Bitcoin uh, seems a little bit better right now in terms of charting. Ethereum's, uh, Ethereum, if I, if I had to go over to the Ethereum Bitcoin value, this is kind of what scared me off Ethereum in terms of trading it just for a few days. Being that we had this massive wick uh, on the Ethereum versus Bitcoin value. Which is weird, is that? It means that a lot of people are trading Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And generally, actually, when that happens, 
it's generally quite good news. However, I'm just staying away from this right now because I believe that our odds are much better with Bitcoin. So what are we expecting for the price of Bitcoin? Well, of course, Bitcoin did a typical pattern. It's called a bump and run is this. Essentially, you've got your run and your bump or whichever way around it is. Or is it bump and then run? I think it's bump and then run, actually. That makes more sense. Um, but essentially, we did the bump and run. We came up, we hit this resistance level. And of course, I'm not expecting to break through this resistance level straight away. This resistance level is sitting at $18,400. I don't really expect to break through $18,400 on the first go, being that we're already up very significantly. In fact, if I'm to measure the price increase that we've experienced recently, if we go from bottom to where we are right now, we're up about 7%. And this is what I was discussing in the video the other day. I was discussing that, look, we can take a trade here and make very significant profits with pretty low risk, being that there are too many people shorting. And I think this data is going to come out and it's going to be quite positive and, and nice. Um, that's what I thought would happen. It's what I hoped would happen. And it kind of came out a little bit flat, but the market pumped out anyway, and it all worked out fairly well. Um, I can't complain at all, being 40 grand in profit over the past couple of days. By the way, slap a like on today's video if you're enjoying these regular trade updates, because so far, so good. 2023, 100% positive trades. Uh, we've not made a loss yet this year, which is fantastic. And we're already, how many days into the year? 12 days into January. I can't believe it, actually. Can you believe we're 12 days into January? It feels like 2023 has been going on forever. Anyway, price of Bitcoin right now. Of course, we've got a gap here. Is that gap going to fill? I unfortunately think it might. Um, I really don't want to say it will, but it seems more realistic that it would do than it wouldn't do. Because the breakthrough 18,400 on the first attempt doesn't make a whole lot of sense as much as I'd like it to make sense. So again, I feel like shorting Bitcoin right now wouldn't be the worst idea. I know I took a joke long position in the live stream earlier. I've since closed that position. It was only for like $3,000 and I closed it in a $12 loss. I was literally just seeing if it would pump to the upside. We didn't and, and I saw I closed the position. It was not really a serious position at all. If you did decide to go long at approximately those levels because I did, please reconsider that decision um, because from my perspective, I just did it for a bit of a joke on the stream, something to watch. Um, now, something to look at right now when it comes to the price of Bitcoin, of course, would be, of course, the retrace that we could be about to experience. We can, we might come back up to this level here, about 18,200, but then I would kind of expect some kind of sequencing or, or just consolidation at this range. It'll either be consolidation at this range or a drop back down to revisit this level of support right here. And, and that's the problem, because if we come down to revisit this level, knowing how Bitcoin has traded recently, I don't know, it seems likely that we would continue to drop, um, which seems unfortunate to say that, but it could well be the case. So I'm keeping a close eye on everything right now in terms of my trades. I've reduced my overall liquidity in favor of taking something more solid when the time comes. I believe that there are short opportunities available on Bitcoin right now. But the one thing that I think will outperform any of these things is TAP. Because look at TAP right now. Perfect bull pennant. That bull pennant's coming out and eventually we will break this resistance. Or at least I really hope that we break this resistance. It's been coming now for a few days. And we tried to do it the other day. We faked out and went back to the downside. We've since bounced back up and we look like we're going to have another crack at this resistance level at approximately 36 Satoshis. Now, if we actually look at that resistance level, it's really not that much of a resistance level. If we actually look at this right now, there's only 0 0.68 at uh, 34 sats. There's a bit of a sell wall here at 35. But once you pass 35 all the way up to 40, there really isn't a whole lot of sell pressure on the order book. At the same time, look how full the order book is on the buy side right now. There is a significant amount of buys coming in for people that want to buy tap at lower prices. But the question is, are those people going to get that opportunity in the next few days? I don't know the answer to that question. I can tell you, though, that I am long term incredibly bullish on this application. And because of the amount of people that are signing up and using it right now, they are generating fees and those fees go towards business growth and business adoption. And then that pushes the coin more because there are more users and it goes in this upward spiral. You don't need Bitcoin's price to be rising to have an altcoin in an upward spiral. And that's the magic of this trade, because we could well do a thousand decks from where we first started out this year. Um, I've got zero doubt about that. In fact, I still feel like the price of tap is very small and that this right here is a bullpen and, and so hopefully we should 
break to the upside. So far, so good in terms of positive momentum and liquidity on the order book and general interest consistently increasing. So I hope that continues to increase. And by the way, you should chill tap to every single YouTuber that you know. You want adoption to grow? We've got to work together on this one. You've got to use the application. You need, you get that code on the application when you sign up that you can sign other people up for. You should tell other people, friends and family to use Tap's application. It costs them nothing to use and it's ultimately better than the current bank account that they have because they can access Bitcoin and yeah, it's fully regulated and it's insured and it's actually insured technically to a higher standard than what your bank account is because your bank account's only insured to £80,000 or is it £90,000? Anything above that's not insured. However, Tap is insured for £100 million, so it's a little bit different than that. Now, Coming back, of course, we've got we discussed the price of TAP. Of course, I'm bullish on the price of TAP right now. Um, if we look at the DXY, the DXY dumped down really heavily today after the news broke about CPI inflation, which is fantastic. Again, I'm expecting the DXY over time. So although Bitcoin may have a slight retrace to the levels of which it was at previously, I'm actually expecting good things from the DXY. DXY should come down now and revisit this white line. If that happens and it revisits that white line right there, then Bitcoin's price will break that $18,000 barrier. So for me, in terms of trading right now, in terms of trade, trades to take, when will I take a trade? I'll take a trade when we break this resistance level here at $18,350. If it breaks above $18,350, I'll be going long on Bitcoin. Until then, I don't know, I just made a wedge. I don't really need to take the, the risk right now. I need to focus on business and uh, get, get everyone paid, essentially. So it's, it's great news, a great week, and uh, I hope you're all enjoying the channel right now. If you are, do slap a like on it. We are trying to hit 500 likes on all of these videos, and of course, trying to hit 100,000 subscribers as well. So make sure you are subscribed. Thank you for watching, and I'll update you again very soon. So turn on those channel notifications. Goodbye.